Okay, we're on to uh, lecture 24 and uh, talk about the cosmological constant. Uh, Einstein introduced the cosmological constant in the field equation to obtain a static solution. Okay. And the cosmological constant may be viewed as a constant vacuum energy density with a negative pressure, which gives rise to a repulsive force that increases the distance. And uh, the universe dominated by vacuum energy expands exponentially. That's the three items we're going to talk about in this first part of lecture 24. Uh, turns out one of the Einstein's great contributions to cosmology was his discovery that GR can accommodate a form of cosmic gravitational repulsion by including a new term in his field equations. Uh, before the late 1920s and the, with the discovery of Lamartur and the Hubble of an expanding universe, just by everyone, Einstein included, believed that we lived in a static universe. So in order to obtain a static universe solution from GR, Einstein altered his field equation by including a repulsive component. But Einstein discovered that geometric side, remember his equations, the geometric side on the, on, on the left hand side, on the right hand side is energy momentum. The geometric side of his field equation can be modified by addition of a new term, which is proportional to the metric cell, as it also all satisfies the conservation conditions and uh, you should obtain the Einstein tensors. It was, uh, remember, we need uh, symmetric rank two and uh, uh, satisfy the conservation condition in order to arrive at the Einstein tensor. But the G mu yourself actually has all these properties. So therefore, it can be added to the geometric side with some constant lambda. Okay. Of course, such a modification will alter its uh, non relative to the limit. So it would differ from the Newtonian equations. It was, if you add this, then you will get the Newtonian equation in the Newtonian limit. I should explain the new term induced a force that actually increases the distance. So in order for this alteration to be compatible with known phenomenology, it must have a coefficient lambda so small as to be unimportant except a truly large cosmic distance. Has this term lambda has been be called cosmological constant. Now, why the cosmological constant was introduced as an additional geometric term on the left hand side, for its physical interpretation, it's easier we move to the right hand side. Of course, then it's trivial, just move it to the right hand side. So it viewed it as an addition source term. In particular, in the vacuum state, it was when the, the normal T mu is zero, the vacuum state, we have the Einstein equation looks like this. And then we interpret the lambda term as a, a vacuum energy momentum of the vacuum state. Okay, so T was a, a super square lambda indicated as a vacuum state. Okay, and uh, come to this term, of course, uh, uh, T lambda is, is equal to minus lambda over kappa. Kappa is, remember, is uh, a pi g over c to the fourth, and the uh, g mu nu, which is, of course, the uh, energy momentum tensor in the Robertson walk space time, which can be written as minus one is zero. It's a block diagonal with G, three by three G mu, G i j here. So now, same way we interpret this as, as energy momentum tensor, so we can be written in terms of the density term and the pressure term. Okay. So, so therefore, uh, uh, we have an expression for the uh, for a positive uh, lambda, the vacuum energy density, okay, this equation is two, is lambda c squared four pi, which is a positive. Okay, so it's a positive constant. Now it's constant in space and in time. It, you know, no matter how you change the volume, or it's it's still the same density. The vacuum pressure, of course, now is just equal to 
minus of the vacuum energy density. So therefore, it has the equation state parameter exactly to minus one, we were talking about. Okay. So first of all, it's in case you wonder, well, what is the negative pressure? Okay. Like normally, you have a, a chamber with pistons. You have some gas. Then the, the gas will push against the, the piston, push it out. But for a land of substance who has a negative pressure, it was, instead of pushing it out, it will suck it in. Okay. That's exactly what we expect from the first law of thermodynamics, T e minus P T V. Because if you have a constant density, like in this, in this case here, so therefore the change in energy is simply the energy density multiplied by the change in volume. So you equate these two, tells you the pressure has been negative minus of the energy density. And that's just exactly what we have. Now, we'll show that the land of term is correspond to the gravitational repulsion, which increases with distance. Let's consider the, the second Freeman equation, which is the a double dot is between the minus rho c squared plus uh, three pressure. Now, for example, for a cosmic fluid that made of non relative matters, which is, uh, uh, <coughs> The density is positive and the pressure equals zero. So, therefore, the right hand side, is, the whole thing is negative. And so, we expect to have a, a decelerating, uh, decelerating expansion, a decelerating universe. But for a land dominated fact, this case, so, and uh, so this will be just it's a row, be row lambda, the P, P lambda. And remember, P lambda is equal to minus this, so this is equal to because it's plus three here, so it's plus two rho, uh, rho lambda c squared. So you have a, a positive uh, uh, ex a second derivative. So we have an accelerated expansion. Okay. So, so it's also in, to consider the Newtonian limit. Okay. Remember we said for ordinary matter like here, you call Newtonian limit, you just recover Newton's equation. But if the the substance the idea gas, for example, both have density and pressure, then the Newtonian limit turns out to be this, which really says not only a mass energy, but also the pressure is source of gravity. Okay. Now, if so, therefore, in our case, we have uh, uh, mass density, uh, energy density, and, and pressure. <coughs> so, and the energy density is this, and the pressure is, is minus of this, and then we'll put them together here. So the the, uh, the Laplacian acting on the gravity potential is equal to minus c squared lambda, which is positive. So the solution of this equation, to give the, uh, this really, it should be phi sub lambda, is equal to minus lambda c squared r squared. You can plug in, check out, this is the solution. Now, between two mass points, this potential corresponds to a repulsive force per unit mass uh, that increases the separation because you take the uh, force per unit mass, which is the g factor, which is the minus of the gradient of the potential, and you plug this potential here, you, you, you just take the uh, minus, minus, just cancel, then you have uh, uh, the uh, r squared, you just become Land C square R. Okay, so therefore this is uh, 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 this is to be compared with a familiar case. That's attraction that decreases with time. This is attraction is a minus sign here and one over R square, and here is proportion to R and plus sign here that increases R. So it's a repulsion that increases with separation. So with this repulsion. Uh, increased distance, even a small lander can have a significant effect on truly large cosmic dimensions. Okay. So this is the first part of lecture 24.